Today we're going to be talking about XOR and some things about it that are kind of interesting, maybe even useful. Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some code that to new programmers may look a little magical, arcane, mysterious. You may or may not ever actually use it in real life, but I think it's helpful in helping you understand XOR and some of the interesting things about it that can be really useful. But before we dive in, I wanted to let you know that this video is brought to you by, well, you. All of you wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon and by buying merch like this. And I want to say a huge thanks for all of the support. I really appreciate it. But I did want to make one announcement also is that I recently partnered with Merchinate to bring to basically expand my options when it comes to merch, basically like the merch I'm wearing right now. And actually, sadly, Merchinate just let me know that they're going to be shutting down later on this summer, I think in June. But anyway, the point is, if you've been dying to dress more like me, if you've been trying to get your hands on some of this merch, some of the options available through Merchinate may only be available for a short time. So if you're interested, check it out. But I will figure something out. I just don't know what it is. Anyway, back to XOR. So in today's video, I want to start with a bit of a challenge. So this is a simple program. This is basically our challenge for today. I have two variables, two integers. Their values don't really matter. I just gave them 999 and negative 234, but I could have done anything. I also have a printf statement down here that is going to print out the values of x and y. And the challenge is really simple. Basically, without calling any functions, declaring any other variables, or using any additional memory, I want you to swap the values of x and y. Also, I want you to do it in three statements or less. Also, while you're thinking about it, your solution should be general, meaning that if I go in here and change the values of x and y to, say, 888, your swap should still work. Now, of course, I'm going to show you a solution, and maybe some of you have seen this before, but if you haven't, pause this video right now and take a minute or two and see if you can come up with a solution and describe it down in the comments. And I'm really serious about doing this. Try it out. You will get a lot more out of these examples if you at least try to tackle them on your own before you just see my solution. Okay, great. So you've had some chance to work on it. Hopefully you've got some ideas of your own. Now, there may be multiple ways to do this. If you thought of one that I didn't, by all means, please let me know down in the comments. But the solution that I wanted to look at basically looks like this, where you say x, xor equals y, y xor equals x, and then x xor equals y. Now at this point, the more seasoned among you are either working it out, or maybe you've seen this before, and the absolute beginners are going, what did you just do? And of course, we're going to go through it. But first of all, let me just show you that it actually works. So if we come down here and compile it, I am using a simple make file that I created. Nothing fancy here. But if I come back here and I compile it, we should compile just fine. And then if we run it, you can see that sure enough, it does swap the values. Okay, so now let's come back and let's see what's going on here. Because what I'm doing is I'm simply using XOR or exclusive OR repeatedly to swap the values, but it probably doesn't look simple to you yet. So I wanna see if we can break it down just a little bit. Okay, so the caret equals right here basically is the same as me saying equals X caret Y. OK, so it's just like plus equals or minus equals, but it's with XOR. And of course, maybe some of you haven't seen XOR before. XOR or the exclusive OR operator is a bitwise operator. It takes two binary values and compares them bit by bit. And if the bits are different, meaning one is a one and the other is a zero, but not both, then it results in a one. And otherwise it results in a zero. So if the bits are the same, it's zero. If the bits are different, it's a one. Now XOR has one very useful property. And that is that if I take a bit, let's say a one, and XOR it with another bit, let's say another one, that's gonna give me a zero, right? Because they're both the same. Now, if I XOR that result with one again, so basically with the same thing that I XOR it with the first time, then I get the one that I started with. Now let that sink in a bit. I'm gonna expand this example a little and say, if I take any set of bits and I XOR them with any other set of bits, then I get something, maybe an intelligible looking series of bits. But if I XOR this with the same set of bits again, then interestingly, I get back the original thing that I started with. Pretty cool, huh? So now if we go back to our code, let's look at what we're doing. So I'm going to call the original values of X and Y, A and B, just so we don't get confused. X and Y are the variables, A and B are the original values. Okay. Okay. Now in this first line, basically what we're going to do is we're going to XOR X and Y or A and B together. And so now if we think about it, we're going to say that we're going to say that X 
is equal to a xor b, right? Okay, so this is the value of x. Now, if we come down to this one, now you can see, okay, we, we're gonna set y, right? We're gonna xor y with x, which happens to be a x or b. So this is gonna be y, right, or b, right? And we're gonna xor it with a x or b, right? Okay, now remember what I said, and that is that if I take A and XOR it with B and then XOR that with B again, so I XOR it with the same thing twice, this is just going to give me A. So now Y is gonna have the value of A, which is the original value that X was assigned. So in this case, 888. Okay, so half our swap is done. Now let's come down here and this one is going to be, we're basically setting X is going to become the value of X, which is A, X or B, and we are going to XOR that with Y. And Y happens to be A. Okay, now remember, again, B, we XOR it with A, and then we XOR it with A again, and what that's going to give us is B. So at the end of these three operations, X has the value of B, and Y has the value of A. So it actually swapped them. And we didn't need any extra variables, we didn't need any extra memory, or anything like that. So this is pretty cool. Now, in case you're still wondering, in case you're still not convinced, let's just take a quick look at the binary really quick. I'm just going to actually print this out as it happens. So instead I'm gonna print out the hex version and let's give it eight so we get the whole integer. We're gonna get all the bits and let's watch how this progresses. Okay, I'm just gonna go put these printfs up through here. Okay, so all I'm doing here is we're still gonna get the final output, but what I'm gonna do is print out X and Y in hexadecimal, and so you can kind of see what's going on. So let's compile it and we will run it. And you can see, sure enough, okay, we start up here now. Of course, these are the hex values. So this one is 0x378. This one is FFFFFF16. And then basically you notice that when, when we come down here in this first step, you're basically combining the two. So you get this and you're like, that doesn't look anything like either of these, but it's sort of a combination of the two using XOR. And then by the time we come down to this second one, you can see we basically have swapped. So you can see that value A shows up in Y, and this is still the combined XOR together version. And then if we come down here, you can see that we basically finish the swap and you end up with the original value. Okay, so this is really cool, but is it useful? Now, I've talked in the past about fancy, difficult to read code, and I don't actually recommend that you start swapping variables like this, unless you absolutely have to. Using a temporary variable is probably going to be easier for others to follow. But I think this example is really useful to help you understand how XOR works. And XOR is very useful, primarily due to this little property. In some of the places you're gonna see it used, it's used in computing checksums, we use it in storage arrays, like RAID arrays to uh, recover lost data. We can also use it in some forms of encryption. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to dig into any of these topics further in a future video. But I do hope this little short example does help you uh, expand your knowledge, your understanding of XOR. I won't say that I use XOR every day, but it is amazing how often it comes in handy. Like this video if you liked it. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite use for XOR is. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss next week's video, and I will see you next week.